Hey Steve here and welcome to this next video in the Processing Subscriber Images series. Uh, this set of bracketed exposures has been sent to me by Steve Bryson, so thanks Steve for sending those through. Uh, what we're looking at here is uh, each one of the bracketed exposures in Camera Raw. So we've got the thumbnails just down the side here. And so what I'm going to basically do is just pick the best ones worth uh, blending and then just do that in Photoshop and show you how it's done. So um, before we get to that though, there are some points worth mentioning regarding these bracketed exposures. So if I just start with this top one here, I don't know why, um, I don't know why like we can't drag these up and down to put them in a particular order, but that's how it is, <laughs> I guess, thanks to Camera Raw. Um, but yeah, let me just start off with this one. So I'll show you all the exposures first. We've got this one, which is like a mid to bright exposure. We've got a darker one here. And obviously this is a high dynamic range shot because we've got the shadows here in the foreground and then you've got the bright sun literally in the frame. Um, so, you know, quite a few exposures have been taken. Uh, this is quite a dark one. And then we go back to a bright one here, but I won't be able to use this one because it looks like something shifted. Um, either the tripod moved somehow or maybe they're all handheld and somehow this one just doesn't line up. Uh, but if you just look at the line of the uh, you know the ridge here, when I flip to the other images, they're all pretty consistent. But this one here is a bit kind of further up, so we're not going to be able to use this one. Um, but yeah, I'll just show you the other exposure. So we've got a dark one here, which allows for the sun star, and we've got a brighter one, which is for the darkest shadows over here, and then we've got a couple of even darker ones for that sun star. And then we've got another one here, which is kind of halfway between middle and shadow. So, um, yeah, the first thing that I'll sort of mention really is that these darkest exposures here, um, even this one really, uh, we can't, can't really do too much with these because whilst it kind of makes sense to bracket and keep bracketing down until we've got all of the detail in the shot and there's no overexposed bits. The fact that the sun is creating this sun star uh, basically means that that's never going to expose correctly. Um, and so with a shot like this where we've um, you know, tried to basically get as much of it um, as possible, the, like if we try to blend this in, because all of the uh, sort of surrounding sky around the bright sun star is actually quite a dark blue. Like if we blend this into a regular brightness sky, then um, you know we're gonna have like a blue, a dark blue ring around the sun in a otherwise bright blue sky. So um, yeah, I, I mean, in my own shots as well, I end up throwing away exposures um, for this very same reason, but I always do like to just capture that full dynamic range or as much of it as possible. So um, yeah, just really a quick note on that. Um, as it turns out, I think we'll probably only use two exposures from here. So this one is, um, you know, this, this first one that I opened on is a quite a good exposure. The shadows here aren't really dark enough to warrant blending anything brighter in these shadows. You know, we can pull enough detail out of there and the uh, the sky is only just kind of overexposed um, and you know we can we've got a few options really it depends what you want to do it depends on your approach uh, we could just take the highlight slider here in camera raw and just move that down and see what we're left with in the sky um, and yeah i mean this already um, has given us you know, it's recovered quite a lot of those blown out clouds in the sky. This sun star, however, is still a bit kind of big and overwhelming in my opinion. So I think it will probably still be worth blending another exposure in just to get a better sun star. So which one are we going to do that from? Let me just remind myself the other exposures that we have. Um, just looking at all the dark exposures, probably the second one actually. Um, so if I just put the highlights down and then maybe even bring the exposure up to about here, 
I think that gives us like a better sun star um, and yeah it just gives us a bit more in the uh, yeah in the clouds as well so what I'll do is just use these two exposures um, so I'm highlighting them both here and I'll just open them in Photoshop now okay so we've got the two exposures open and now I just need to copy this one and paste it into this document so that they're layers in the same document um, now I do just actually need to align these slightly because as you can see if I toggle the layers off and on there's just a little bit of uh, movement there between the layers so let me just highlight both of the layers in the layers panel I'll go edit auto align and then just choose the auto setting And that's just going to line those up much nicer. So let's just crop off the little bit that we've lost around the edges now, thanks to the uh, auto align. And think about how we're going to blend these. So I think even though the sky is quite dark here, we can start off just by blending the whole thing in and then adjust the brightness after we've blended it in with this foreground. So I'm just wondering the best way to do that. I'll see if a luminosity mask is going to get us there, but I suspect that it might be a bit more tricky than that um, because we're dealing with uh, selections that are basically trying to select based on two areas of the image where the brightness is similar. So with luminosity masks or luminosity selections, we're able to create selections based on one part being brighter than another part of the image but if they're both the same then it's not going to work that accurately but what we can do is use the preview in the luminosity masking panel um, to preview a few selections and see what kind of selections we can uh, get so let me just start off with uh, a one or a two here on the shadows um, okay so we can see here this one isolates the foreground the, the uh, shadows are the brightest part of this uh, preview and the midtones are grey and the highlights are what, uh, black um, so that doesn't quite create the separation between sky and foreground let me see if we go deeper into the shadows if that helps helps over here on the right hand side but still not really over here on the left um, that might still that might still work though uh, let me just go on the do, you know, do the opposite and see if we can create a highlight selection that gives us the isolation um, this might do the trick actually it might be okay that we don't need to blend in the sky over here in the left hand side uh, let's give it a shot so I'm gonna go with this selection actually before uh, yeah cancel this before I do this I actually need to add a layer mask to this top layer um, so yeah let's go back and load that highlight selection I'm gonna click use mask I'm gonna click on the mask of the dark layer command H I'll press B on the keyboard to load my brush tool just put a white foreground on it and I've got a brush opacity of about 30% I'm just gonna start brushing up here and this is actually going to do just fine um, and as I move over the edge of the rocks here we can see the brush isn't doing anything uh, because that luminosity selection is preventing us from going over the edges into the uh, into the rocks so let's just preview this off and on so I think the cloud is a little bit dark compared to the foreground now uh, it just looks a little bit unbalanced but we can probably adjust this now uh, I think we can you know keep what we've blended but then just adjust the brightness in the next few steps um, of the process so let me just press command D or control D on a PC to deselect my selection and there we go we've blended in that overexposed sky with the slightly more defined um, sun star and now I think with a couple of really quite basic contrast adjustments we can really make this foreground pop um, so 
let's just have a look here in my panel um, in the light section we've got some shortcuts to some contrast adjustments um, you know if you've got the panel or if you intend to uh, to download it then when you first start to use it it's always worth having a play and experiment just to see what each one of these does um, they are explained in the documentation on the luminosity masking panel.com uh, but basically yeah just a quick <laughs> explanation really um, the curves and levels adjustments here they basically just create shortcuts or they are shortcuts to creating um, some adjustment layers either curves or levels with some basic uh, predefined settings so I tend to use the levels one the most uh, since developing this myself and using it myself uh, that's the one I kind of go to the most and that is probably because that's the uh, the level or that's the method of contrast that I tend to use the most um, so yeah have a little, uh, little experiment with that yourself and um, yeah you may decide that you prefer a different one but this is me uh, so what that does is I'll hit the levels one and it adds this levels adjustment layer which I can now adjust if I want so I can just double click on that and open the properties and adjust it as I normally would any other levels adjustment so I'm just bringing this white point slider towards the middle and that's brightening the whole image up quite significantly um, obviously the sky here is completely overexposing but that's okay because we can just mask that back out um, so really we're just looking at the effect that this is having in the rocks in the foreground to begin with um, so that looks pretty good there what we can do um, because we've spent time creating this layer mask here on uh, on the dark exposure um, I'll just bring that um, I'll bring that mask into view uh, just in the panel here you can click show mask and this is what that layer mask actually looks like uh, we can load this mask now as a selection so we don't have to go and find another uh, you know we don't have to go and create another selection the long way we can just reuse this one um, you know if, we, if we've got a decent mask that's going to do a good job on another layer we can just reuse it so um, I will click load mask as selection so that's loaded this now as a luminosity selection so I can come up into the levels one adjustment press command H to hide the marching ants and now with a soft black brush I can just um, got some weird preview on there I can't remember how to get rid of that let me just click off a few times um, okay I'll do this without first bringing the uh, mask into a preview so I'm just going to click on the mask click load mask as selection yeah that's it and now with a black brush I can just brush up here and mask this adjustment out of the sky so again command H and then just deselect and without the luminosity selection active I'm just gonna darken some of the sky up here as well So kind of getting there already just with these couple of adjustments, you know, the exposure blend and then the uh, contrast adjustment. And really from here, you can just continue on doing as many of these types of adjustments, uh, you know, contrast adjustments as you like. Uh, so let's just do another quick example. I'll add another levels adjustment. Let's really make that foreground here pop. Um, now let's mask this out of the foreground so I'm just going to reload this layer one mask again load mask a selection click up here and just brush into the sky to just remove that effect from the sky and I'll deselect now just sort of blend it in over here and now once we've 
sort of become happy with the foreground, we can um, do another adjustment just to perfect the brightness in the sky. So I think I'll use a curves adjustment this time, maybe uh, just lightening a bit rather than adding contrast. Actually, let's see what contrast gives us. Um, all right, that's not too bad. I'm just looking at the grays here in the cloud. Um, yeah, they look a bit sort of, well, they do look a bit low in contrast. So maybe I can just add some contrast specifically to those clouds without overexposing. Okay, that looks all right. So let's try this. Let's invert this layer mask now. And now with a white foreground brush, I'm just gonna brush to reveal that contrast that I've just added into the clouds. Um, I might have to, yeah, no, that's too much over there in the left where it's going really blue. So I really do have to restrict this just to the clouds. So let's see that. It's just making them pop a little bit. And maybe one final levels adjustment just for good measure. Actually, we probably don't even need that. I think we're pushing those highlights pretty much as far as they can go. So, um, yeah, with that done, that's quite a, yeah, that, that pops quite nicely now with that bit of contrast in the foreground. Uh, and then we can just add some detail maybe, like we could do some dodging and burning. I won't go through this now, but you know, that would be my next step. We could do some dodging and burning just to bring the details out in the rocks here even more. Um, and then just a bit of sharpening to uh, to really sort of just finish it off. Uh, I think I'll add the sharpening now. I've got a, got a button here in the panel for uh, adding a sharpening effect. And this, uh, this particular sharpening effect is good because it creates a uh, high pass um, a high pass layer, which is then put into overlay blend mode. Uh, so that's good for sharpening. But then there's a luminosity mask gets added automatically to that sharpening layer uh, to help eliminate any halos that are caused by that sharpening process. So. Here we go. This is the uh, this is the effect turned off, and this is sharpening turned on. Depending on what screen you're viewing this on, you may or may not see that. But yeah, that's a pretty good sharpening effect there. And so I think that's probably it for this video. Um, yeah, really, just a, just a quick exercise in exposure blending and deciding which exposures we're actually going to use from a, a wider selection. So I hope you found it useful and if you'd like to download my luminosity masking panel there'll be some links below this video where you can do that. It's $97 and um, yeah it's basically a one-off cost and you get lifetime updates. That's uh, probably about it for me this time so thanks for watching. I'll speak to you soon.